Welcome to another milling training video from DAPRA, your Made in America provider of high performance indexable milling tools. Today's video will cover principles to follow when indexing the carbide inserts in your milling tool. Following these basic guidelines will give you the best performance and the longest life from your indexable tooling. So let's take a look. Before we jump right into the indexing procedure, we should briefly look at the components of the insert and the cutter body interface so that terms used in the indexing discussion will make more sense. We of course start with our carbide insert, which could be round, rectangular, octagonal, square, or whatever shape your insert happens to be. Now the pocket that the insert sits in is typically going to have similar features regardless of the insert shape. First is the pocket floor, where the bottom of the insert rests and against which the majority of the cutting forces are directed. Then there are two locating edges, the radial locating edge, which locates the insert the correct distance from the tool center line, and the axial locating edge, which locates the insert the correct distance from the end face of the tool. Next is the corner relief, and depending on the shape of the insert, there may be more than one. Be careful not to allow debris to accumulate here, as that can interfere with proper insert loading. Finally, there is the insert screw, which is responsible for both pulling the insert tightly into its position and for holding the insert in place during metal cutting. Now that we know the components of the pocket, Let's look at good indexing principles intended to maximize the life of your cutter body and the performance of your indexable milling tool assembly. Okay, so for our example, I'm going to use a two inch diameter high feed shell mill. Uh, and for the sake of time, even though this is five flutes, we'll just focus on the one for our techniques. So step one in indexing is just do a quick visual inspection. Do I have any damaged inserts, any damage to my pockets? that might cause uh, a need to replace the cutter body. And at this point, obviously the cutter looks good. So step two is gonna to be to make sure I have clean torques recesses. So this area here where the torque drive is going to go uh, needs to be clean and free of debris. Uh, so I'll take my air hose and blow that out. And when that has been done to all of our flutes, then I'm gonna use my Torx driver to remove the screw. We highly recommend uh, the use of a torque wrench. Uh, in this particular case, I've got a nice fat T-handled torque wrench here, and that gives me good torque for removing the screws, but it also ensures that all of my screws go in at the same torque. Not only that, but from shift to shift or operator to operator, the same torque is being used. That's going to prolong the life of your driver bits, and it's gonna prolong the life of your screws. So we'll take that screw out. And notice I'm not going to just loosen the screw and then spin my insert. We need to make sure of a few things here. Number one, uh, do we see any damage or debris once the, the insert is removed? Uh, do I see any damage or debris on my insert? I don't visually. I'm going to make sure and wipe my insert sides and bottom clean and I'm going to make sure and blow out my pocket wall. Okay, so insert is clean and undamaged. Pocket walls and floor are undamaged. I can now load my insert and we, we recommend holding the insert in place while you tighten the screw rather than just throwing your insert on the screw and tightening it up. Uh, for a square insert like this, it would probably orient itself correctly without an issue. But there's always the potential for it binding or misloading or something getting in the way of the insert loading properly, especially on inserts that have a little trickier geometry, whether that's a round insert or a high feed. Uh, you won't always, you can't always just assume that the insert has seated itself properly. So by manually putting the insert in place and even moving it back and forth up and down a little bit, make sure there's no residual debris or anything interfering, and then holding it in place, you know you've got good run out at this point. 
because you've assured your insert is clean, your pocket is clean, and now I'm tightening the screw just until the head itself makes contact with the countersink. At that point I feel comfortable letting go of the insert and then tightening the screw until I get my click from the torque wrench. So now I have the screw tightened at the correct torque. I know that my runout is good because I've cleaned everything out before reassembling. That doesn't preclude, however, that if you're using a presetter, it's a good idea to check your axial and your radial runout at this point once all the, all the flutes have been re-indexed. Uh, that's assuring that when you put the tool back in, you're getting the same length, same diameter that you were operating with before. Okay, so assuming we've taken these steps on all five flutes, we can summarize the steps. Clean out your Torx recess blow everything out to make sure there's no residual debris, unscrew your screws, clean your insert sides, clean the insert bottom, blow out your pocket walls and your pocket floors, visually inspect for any damage or debris, and then reassemble holding the insert in place, tightening the screw at least until the head makes contact with your countersink, at which point you can release the insert and fully tighten. Now you have your cutter indexed to new edges and you're ready to go. So here's a good example of what I was referring to in regards to insert shape and why it's necessary to hold that insert in the pocket while you're tightening your screw. As you can see, we've got a round insert now and there's really nothing on the sides of this particular double-sided insert uh, to orient the tool. What orients this insert in the cutter body actually are the dimples on the face of these inserts. So you'll, you'll see why it becomes more important to make sure that that insert is properly loaded before tightening the screw. So again, first step was we'll blow the pocket out as well as our Torx recess and then we'll loosen the screw. and fully remove and taking a look at my pocket walls and my pocket floor everything looks good and damage free my insert sides I'm going to make sure are nice and clean as well as my the face of the insert that rests on the pocket floor everything looks to be damage free and I've wiped off my insert so I'm going to blow out that pocket to assure that the uh, locating edges in there are clean and now what I'm looking for is for the dimples on the insert face to drop into the recesses in the pocket. And you'll see, hopefully you can see in the video, that as I rotate this, the insert drops into place. And if I rotate it again, it'll pop back up. And then once the dimple drops in, then you'll see the, the insert drop back into place. So once I've achieved that, and I know I'm firmly located, I'll hold that insert in place at least until the point where the screw head makes contact with the insert that has happened. Now I can fully tighten until I get my click. So just an example of how important it is to hold that insert in place to make sure you've properly loaded your inserts. An important issue to note is that whenever the surface finish matters of the feature you're machining, be sure to index all of the inserts in your cutter body to the same cutting edge. In this photo of a typical octagonal insert, notice that the edges are marked with corresponding dots. The marking style doesn't really matter and could be numbers, dashes, symbols, whatever. What's important is that the same edge is in use on each insert in the cutter. This provides the best accuracy meaning the least run out and will create the best surface finish. An additional benefit is that each insert will be doing an equal amount of work or have the same chip load. So tool life is both equalized and maximized. Well, that's it for this session. We hope you found this video helpful. Please visit our website for further information on DAPRA's high quality American made milling tools and check back with us for more training videos coming soon.